Good afternoon guys, what's up and hello, and it's your quest host today, Mr. Victor Cowboy, and right here with me, Mr. Vinny Layog, CSB alumnus from Game Dev, and the man behind Tessellate, winner of the Game On, Game of the Year 2016. So hi Vinny, welcome to the show. Hey, thank you for having me. Um, hey, shout out to Quest, thank you so much for, for inviting me to have this interview, and uh, it's really cool uh, that you guys are having this like video and media creation production team. I, I find it really amazing. Uh, shout out especially to my boy Victor for inviting me. My boy, uh, we're Twitter friends. We, yeah. we're, we're always liking each other's tweets. Mm -hmm. well, this is pretty cool, future man. Bandmates, yeah. <laughs> future bandmates. Future mm bandmates. -hmm. So, we'll start off right off bat to know you more. When did you graduate and what year did you start and what year did you graduate from the De La Salle College of St. Daniel Game Dev program? Right, so I started Game Dev um, back in 2011, which was seven years ago. Which I, that was a lifetime ago, I feel like. And I graduated in 2015, um, two years ago. So, uh, as a Game Dev alumnus, how would you describe your overall experience and overall stay here in the, co in the Game Dev and here in the course? So... You know, uh, I've always wanted to be a game developer since I was a kid. Like when I was six years old, I played uh, Pepsi Man, and I found out, hey, this is pretty cool. I, I want to do this kind of stuff. You know, I always saw, I always saw movies where people were hacking or programming, and I found it really, in, uh, really cool, and I wanted to do that. So when I, I had like a prep yearbook for for you know when you're senior kinder and stuff. And I wrote there, when I grow up, I want to be a programmer. So ever since then, uh, I've been following game industry, and I always wanted to, to be part of that creation process. And when I got to fourth year high school, that's when the CSB opened the game dev course. And of course, like, that was my only choice of all colleges. Like, this, is, this is it. This is my destiny, man. And so... When I was in the course, I really gave my all. I I loved it. You know, I I loved it in a way that if um, if there were things that were lacking, I always wanted to improve it. I wanted to. I, I kept saying, "Let's make this better because this is us. We are the game dev course." And so, uh, you'd you'd find me every day in the lab, just really grinding out my homework, really trying to do my codes especially in the first and second year when I didn't have a laptop on my own so I had to come to school and stay late or during breaks I'd be here in this lab uh, working on my homeworks and trying to get it all done the day it was uh, like assigned and so you know every chance I get to participate in something and hone my skill set I always said that that I wanted to hone my skill set I took it be it the uh, a programming tutorial or you know a seminar or especially a game jam um, I think Benil really gave me all of those great opportunities to to uh, polish my skill set really grow into the the role the career of game development and I don't know I've uh, I was really I love this course you know I, I love all of the I love everything about it, especially when the, the younger batches, like you guys, um, expand on, the, on the, the size of the course, on, the, on what's happening. Like, for example, this quest and yeah. um, this production team. I've been following your articles and your, your videos like with Sir Norman and Sir Nico, and I was, it's pretty damn cool, dude. Like, I, I really wished for something like this to happen. Especially, like, back in uh, my time, we tried to get things going, you know, like, we, but we never found the... It, it was always lack of, like, manpower or something. And I think it's pretty great that you guys are doing something like this. So you talk about Benil giving you uh, opportunities. Uh, so how did Benil uh, give way or, like, welcome you into the industry. Parang, how did you use Benil to get into the industry? So Benil has a lot of events and um, the CSB course, the game dev course is very much tied in with the GDAP 
and IGDA, um, which is the Game Dev Association of the Philippines and the International Game Developers Association. And um, those guys, they, um, they're they always active in Benil. So they'd come by as judges for um, Incendium, which is the Thesis Expo, um, Global Game Jam, and other competitions. Sometimes they come by to, to grade uh, projects. And so getting that exposure to industry, um, practitioners at least, uh, you'll, you'll really get your foot in the door with a lot of companies. Um, some of our profs even own companies and they, they recruit from the students. And you know, that's, that's an opportunity that uh, you, really can't, you really can't miss because these teachers, uh, these profs are there to, to connect with you and really mentor you. you know? um, events like ESGS and PGF, um, Game, Gamescon, uh, Gamecon. Gamecon the other week, um, these are these are perfect opportunities to really dip yourself into the, the waters of industry because when you're there and you have your booth you're really uh, getting in touch with um, you know the companies and people what else uh, yeah and it's a good it's a good way to to immerse yourself in industry so uh, as a part of the industry, of the game development industry, what should undergraduates expect from our game dev industry here in the Philippines? So, you know, as an undergraduate, I think you should really spend a lot of time working on your skill set. Because here in the local game dev industry, it's, they have really high standards, especially when it comes to jobs like programming and art, especially uh, by now, um, are you guys in third year or uh, second, year. second year? So you guys still have a lot of time to, to polish your skill set. I think once you get into um, like more advanced programming or programming uh, architecture like solid, you should really practice your industry standard. Um, how do you approach problems and how do you handle, for example, the Git um, and repository via um, version controls. Um, and for artists, you should really get your fundamentals down by now because as an, as an intern, they're going to be asking you to do a lot of different kinds of work, uh, especially in creation of assets, cleaning up of sprites, stuff like that. Um, they have, uh, what's really important for an underclassman to, to develop by now is their portfolio because that's, that's the thing that's really going to get you into companies. When the recruiter sees your application, and you're, you have a link to your portfolio or you you're uploaded your portfolio, they get to browse and see, get a glimpse of what your skill set is. And I think there's a lot of opportunity here. There's so many nice companies that um, they're tied up with game dev, the game dev course, for example, Koo Apps, and of course, Secret Six, or um, the, what, what people call now the Studio of St. Benil, uh, because there are so many Benilians there in Secret Six, and it's like a big, uh, you know, family reunion of of older game dev people um, and alumni. And I think if you can apply there, Secret Six or uh, Synergy eighty eight or Dream Lords, um, those guys are really accommodating, and you're really going to get a lot of um, like internships. You can get there different roles, uh, like programming, art, um, QA, especially if you want to get into the production role. I suggest going through QA, then go up into production. Uh, what else? There are a lot of events, so take advantage of those. Get to know the companies. Uh, meet people like Solon, a uh, really good friend of mine of Co-Apps. And uh, hmm. I think just take advantage of like ESGS and GameCon and stuff like that. So you mentioned that uh the industry has an accommodating place for people. So, how difficult is it is it to be a part to be to be a part of the industry, basically? Um, I think it's more of you really have to develop your discipline when it comes to your work and your work ethic. You have to be a good uh, like employee, for example. You have to be able to come to work on time. You have to be able to to be professional about work. Um, I think it shouldn't be too daunting. It shouldn't be too intimidating because as a fresh grad, 
they're not they're not necessarily expecting you to know everything they know you're going to be there to learn and polish your skills and so um, but I think by then by graduation at least you should be able to hold uh, stand on your own um, maybe a tip of mine is uh, always be always be practicing at home just your trial and error as like a programmer especially explore the different tools that you can use different engines um, some companies will put you in a totally new engine for example um, Ubisoft um, they have their own proprietary engine and they want you to be able to learn how to use that um, some companies use Unity and others use uh, Game Maker. I know some companies that do uh, RPG Maker games, like my like our prof uh, Doc Bia, and Senshi you know Labs. Senshi Labs. Um, they make great RPGs. You know, like the one of them was in all Filipino, and uh, I think it was Adarna. Adarna. And then I think they recently released um, Taurus. So you know, uh, getting to know the profs like Doc B and making those connections are really important and invaluable here in Benil. So I think it's, it's difficult to, um, it's difficult in a sense that you really have to talk to people. You have to know who are the, who are the industry practitioners, who are the recruiters, um, who are the people that you have to show them that you are a good game developer, that you're really working hard. Uh, that's, it's, um, of course, like you can say that you're kind of shy or something, but you know that's part of your career. So if if you really want to take it seriously, that's something that you should be focusing on, which is building your career, building your uh, your resume and your portfolio. Um, and it shouldn't. I don't know. You can just just ask me, dude. I'll I'll, I'll recommend you. <laughs> So Vinny, what are you up to now? We saw it as like this. It's been a huge success. So, what is Vinny up to right now? Um, so right now we're working on the the sequel to our game Tessellate. Uh, currently, it's called Project Theta because Tessellate was called Project Theta, mm -hmm. so that's a T. Mm -hmm. And then so the letter that comes after Theta is Theta. So we want to make Tessellate Two, which is not the final title, but it's a continuation of the story. Like we really tried to do what we could with the original Tessellate back in 2015, and um, but we were never able to reach like our, our vision. Like we had a we had a goal, but we had to keep on cutting down on um, cutting down on mechanics or different parts of the game. And so now we want to really explore what are the themes we wanted to get at. And um, actually, I have a presentation tomorrow. Uh, for the Comic Con Asia one shot uh, competition, um, we submitted a, a, pr a video presentation to the screening committee. And if we get through screening, we'll be able to present our games at Comic Con Asia, which is pretty cool. You know, me and, uh, me and Erickson, uh, my boy, we, you know, we've been working so hard on this new game. It's, it's really our. Our uh, our brainchild, you know, put so much passion into it, and uh, it's it's turning out really nice. We're we're getting somewhere, and it's really it's pretty cool. Uh, I'm excited. I'm really excited for it. I I want. I, I hope people will will like it. You know, because um, we put so much thought and passion into into creating it. Oh. So earlier you talked about uh, having connections. Yeah. So, how did mentorship from profs and other people help you to be what you are right now? Um, you know, mentors are so important to me. Um, I, I get so inspired by people that have gone through the paths that I've been through. And people like Sir Abed, he, he really helped, helped us out when we were creating our, our thesis project. He, He'd see us, uh, our vision, and he'd agree, and he'd say, "I really like this part, and this is great, and you should keep on doing this because this is what, what looks good." And you know, getting that kind of positive um, affirmation really pushes us and motivates us to, to continue pursuing our passion. I think that meeting people here in the game dev course, especially like my upperclassmen, they, they showed me that you know, it's, 
it's a uh, like it's it's fun. They show me how to like what are the the different ways to do things. How do you solve problems? Um, ways that I never thought of before. I think because the experience that they have is so important, mm -hmm. especially like people like Sir Norman, who I I go to and ask him for advice all the time. Like Sir, how do I how do I move forward with my career or you know things like that, and. Especially um, parents are very important. You, you talk to them, you can ask them about like, what do you think about um, me doing this or, or how I approach certain problems. And I think like, that's something that I always wanted to, to be able to do, which is to talk to the younger people and give them advice. And that's, uh, I, I love my senpais, you know, and I want to give back. That's, I, I want to be a senpai also, in a way, like I want to, I want to inspire kids, man, because I see, I, I used to see people so demotivated, and you know, I wish they had someone cheering them on and telling them that uh, what you're doing is great and you should keep on trying. Like I think mentors are so, uh, they're so vital to your growth as a person because you can't do it on your own. People have learned, uh, mm -hmm. have learned lessons and made mistakes before you, and it's. Uh, it's kind of, it's a good resource to have, <laughs> to, to put it bluntly, you know, like their, their knowledge is invaluable. Yes. So as a part of this industry for how many years, what tips and, uh, so you said that you wanted to be a mentor, so what tips and tricks to, that you can advise to the undergraduates or current students here in the game development program? So, uh, my tip, first of all, is trial and error. Um, you should always be trying out different approaches to whatever problems you're going through, be it uh, Unity or you know Blender 3D modeling or relationships. You should really just try to figure out. You know, like it, there's nothing wrong with failure. Failure is how you learn. Um, one one of the things that I I love going to are like game jams. And for me, like I've been to nine game jams, and of those nine game jams, I had three bad ones. And those three bad ones are the ones that really stick to me. They're the ones that, that I look back on and think, man, what did I do wrong? And those are areas that I can really work on. Like the good game jams are cool, but then you know they don't really, they're, they're for hanging out, they're for having fun, but it's the bad game jams that you'll really learn something. You'll be like, this is, this is something that I missed out on doing. Organizing my team or setting time management or spending too much time uh, messing around or just playing. You know, like those are things you learn from. Um, in school, take advantage of the resources. You, know, they, you, have, you have a lot of um, books in the library that are programming textbooks that you can just open up and read. Those, those are fun. Um, Use the resources, like the, the Alienware lab. I, w I was in the Alienware lab every single day as a, when I was in school, even when I didn't have classes yes. in the Alienware lab. I just sit in, hang out with my friends, take in the air con, uh, but use the computer because you know, it's, it's a powerful machine, man. You know, I, I, I hope, oh, I hope someone uses the HTC Vive, man. Mm -hmm. Because yeah. uh, Sir Norman mentioned to me like no one's using it right now, mm -hmm. and I think it would be pretty cool. Like ESGS 2018, one a, a student or a group of students made an HTC Vive game. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Like I, I would use the HTC Vive if I was here, because <laughs> like back then I used the I, I I worked on an Oculus Rift project and VR is. Freaking amazing! Yeah, sure. like I, I wish someone would take that, take that initiative. Would you consider that VR would be the future of games? VR is the future of anything, man. Yes. Of everything. We are in VR right now, <laughs> and it's a, and it's fun. You know, um, the the advantage of being a younger person in the IT industry is that you'll always be um, on the forefront. So you have all the opportunity to learn the latest uh, yes. technology, and. You shouldn't, you shouldn't, like, the growth of the technology is so fast that you shouldn't get left behind. Like, you should always take advantage of, uh, especially here in Benilde, you know, we're, we're so blessed here. 
we have all of these resources and facilities that uh, no other school has. And uh, I don't know. It should uh, polish your skill set. Uh, portfolio is the most important. I think that's it. Portfolio. And make a good resume. Yes. Send it to me. I'll help you uh, <laughs> polish it. So final question, Vinny. In your opinion, what makes the game development industry unique? Um, of course, you have to be cheesy and say that uh, we all love games. You know, we're we're all gamers here. We all, we love this. Uh, we we we're making what we love and what we're passionate about. What I love about the local industry is that we're a pretty small industry. I think like around four thousand or five thousand people only, and um, very few companies. And the industry is so small that you can go to an event. Last week there was Game Dev Drink Up, yes. where uh, the, uh, members of IGDA met up and then we all drank beer. <laughs> and uh, it was fun, it was a bonding experience. And when you're there, you get you brush shoulders with the CEOs of companies, you know, the, the organizers of events, and you really make a lot of connections. And it's it's pretty. It feels like a family, you know, because we're we're always running into each other, yes. uh, especially like for the graduates of the game dev program. When you see each other at events, you're like, oh hey, how are you doing? It's you haven't seen them in in months, even years, and and you'll be able to be like, hey, remember back in game dev, back in GDD, stuff like that. It's it it's such a like homey feel. It feels like uh, you feel really close with everyone. Like um, that's why I love going to like Incendium and stuff yes. because you know you get to you get to meet people you get to find passionate people that love the same thing you do. Um, yeah, I think well, you know, honestly, game dev for me is the pinnacle of media because it's not it's a brand new technology where you can interact with a virtual world, yes. and I think that is. It pushes technology forward. Mm -hmm. Like, why would you ever make a graphics card? <laughs> you make a graphics card for games, and games are the games are the final frontier yes. of entertainment, man. It's it's pretty uh, pretty intense. That's like my philosophy when it comes to games. And you no, know, here in industry, we all have our different types of approach to that, to to the medium of video games. And uh, it's nice meeting people that that you know that can talk about that kind of thing that that get into uh passion for game dev and it's pretty it's pretty cool i love game dev i love this industry so where can we find your work where can we find tessellate your games your portfolio basically and where can we find you you know social media right so um so Tessellate is on um, itch.io. You can you can check it out. Um, I post links all the time on, on Facebook and uh, Twitter. Um, you can follow Tessellate on Facebook. It's facebook.com slash Tessellate game. We're going to change that soon because uh, we're, we're releasing our second game. And um, you can follow me on social media at Vincent Lyog uh, on Twitter. Um, I post a lot of, <laughs> a lot of <laughs> jokes, a lot of uh, shit posts. Um, what else? Add me on Facebook. You can just ask me anything. Um, I'm going to start vlogging also. Yeah. <laughs> so it'll be fun. Um, check out our band. We have a band together. SoundCloud. <laughs> check out our SoundCloud. Um, what else? Yeah, I guess that's it. Uh, follow me. Follow me on Twitter at Vincent Lyo. Add me on Facebook. Um, if you wanna ask me for resources like game design document of my old games or you know portfolio. You just ask me. So that's it, guys. Mr. Vincent Pilayog. It's been a pleasure to interview you. Thank you, Thank Thank you for your time. Of course. We'll be hoping that he'll be part of our more of our videos soon. So yeah, definitely. keep that in mind. And subscribe. Subscribe. Hit the subscribe button and the notification bell. Yo, so if you like this video, please uh, like and subscribe. Hit the notification bell to be notified when the, we release new videos. Um, usually every time they find a new guest, I suppose. <laughs> That's very good. Uh, like Quest on Facebook.